Hi, good. good morning, everyone. Okay, this is Professor Huang. So, continuing to cover the topic of uh, world view. And uh, actually, it's a Christian world view we are covering. And to understand the Christian world view, you gotta understand the world view first. Uh, then, what the world view is, uh, we've been covering that topic. And today, we are going to cover the topic that world view is related. Uh, there are many components uh, or elements that are, or, or domains, I said, uh, domains that are covered uh, by world view. And the uh, main thing, again, in the world view is how a person or family or a community or a government or, or, or a nation or a certain ethnic culture is viewing or seeing or perceiving the reality. So mainly, again, World view has to do with reality is very subjective a matter, subjective thing. Reality is there. Uh, with the scientific eyes, reality is very uh, objective. Uh, everyone should see the reality in the same uh, perspective. But in actual world that we are living in each individual even the individual has a different view of what the reality is and when you are seeing the reality there are many different elements just simply there are people there are animals there are plants and the universe and the life as we uh, process it. So these are the some of the major topics that are covered or that are included in this world view. And the thing is, one domain or one subject of world view is not is not standing by itself, but that is related to something else. So how one views something else has to do also with uh, how one views the other matter or the other subject or the other domains. So that's the thing that we are trying to cover today. So again, word view is related to one another. It's closely connected. Thus, we begin with the organic nature of word and word view. Even though the things may uh, look segmented or separated, they, the livelihood or living of each element in this reality, it, because it's organic, it is closely connected. Organic, uh, again, your head, your arms, your legs, your eyes, your mouth, that's all closely connected, organic. It's living matter. And when it's living matter, it's closely connected in organic way. Because it's organic, you know, when uh, your, your head uh, gets some pain, we call headache. And then whole body feels it, and you just feel discomfort when you have a headache. So, and then your whole body feels fatigue, meaning uh, weak. Uh, so, that's how this uh, organic is connected because it is it's a lot. It's alive. It's alive. And. So the world view is a living thing, which means it constantly changes. 
people sometimes mistakes that word is fixed but actually it is not as the as the uh, time goes on it changes and it, it continues to uh, change so one word of view today is not going to be the same tomorrow uh, it, it may not change that rapidly but in an individual that could happen but in a culture where it slowly changes and it keeps changing also uh, each word view is interacting even even uh, the the word view of for example uh, let's say Asian world view. Let's say there is a something called Asian world view, and there is an American world view in general. And these two seems to be. I mean, Asia and America is very apart. Uh, there has there is a big ocean uh, in between. But these two world view constantly is interacting with one another these days in the ancient days there were not that much communication and there was a little uh, or less uh, influence uh, from one culture to the other so there is not that much interaction between these two different uh, worldviews but western worldview and eastern worldview now it sometimes crashes sometimes it, it emerges together sometimes learn uh, from each other in that way it interacts not only interacts because it's interacting it influences other words of view it happens not only between western and eastern culture but it happens within a society or individuals so for example when you begin to date uh, a lady or a man, uh, a boy and girls, by their conversation, meeting together, sharing the time, even sharing the meals and everything, you may not acknowledge or understand, but that the world view changes. So when you see, uh, continue to see someone uh, uh, with dating relationship, and they interact. And thus, because of that interaction, uh, there's going to be change in the world of you. So it's related, constantly changing because it's interacting with someone else's world of you. So simply, I mean, your perspective, your philosophy, your idea, your thoughts are changing, which means your world of you at the root may also change. And that's the characteristic of the world view that are related again number four then individually and social sociality uh, it's connected each person's world view is connected or related to someone else's world view and that that <coughs> excuse me that happens uh, within the society a community within a nation Within, within ethnicity, so it continue, it is uh, the levels uh, at the, each level of worldview, it does connect and influence one another. Okay. So that's a, basically the nature of worldview. Uh, in terms of Christian uh, uh, Christian worldview, when you become a believer, you begin to read the Bible. You study the Bible and you listen to the sermons in the church. Not only that, you are interacting with other believers because of uh, that, that nature, and then your worldview begins to change in a Christian way. The problem is some Christian communities have their own uh, worldview, which may, may not or may be based on the Bible or uh, uh, or in, in, in line with 
the Bible, which means it could be based on Bible, it could not be based on Bible. So, so-called heresies or uh, these heresies happen because they do not base their theology or teaching on the Bible. So each uh, Christian community may have a little different uh, worldview, but basically when you base your uh, Christian worldview on Bible, uh, it cannot be different. Uh, the, the, all, the reason for the difference is because of the interpretation. So the reality is biblical truth uh, for Christian worldview. When the, there's a reality called God, showing God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And w w through the Holy Spirit, we have this uh, scripture called Bible. And that's the reality that we are really like to understand and perceive and learn from. But uh, it, because of that interpretation, we may differ in some of the doctrines, some of the theologies, some of the perspective. What we do in, in a Christian world uh, or in the church is to educate people uh, to, to provide them with the common, solid, and Bible-based worldview. So when, when, when you become a Christian, when you, when you are a Christian, the, the question that you're asking is, is this teaching or this worldview, is it based on the Bible? To do so, you gotta know, you gotta understand what the biblical or Christian worldview is. So that's you know, the issue that we are going to uh, study further later on. Okay, coherency with the diversity. See, when you see the world, whether you're Christian or not, whether in your your Eastern uh, in the Eastern culture or Western culture, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a two. When you analyze or, or, or mm, categorize the world of view, there's something that's coherent, coherent or congruent. That means common. So there's something common in each world of view. Uh, something that you share together. For example, say you're an American. And there's something called American ideal, American uh, uh, thoughts, or Americanism even. This is something that's common. For example, freedom, justice. See, these, these are the common value as, as on, in their world view. And if, if you're an American citizen, and uh, you are, has to share that common value. And if you do not share that, and uh, you, you're far from being an American. So equal rights of, and, uh, of a human being, or the freedom of speech, these are so-called common, coherent, congruent, or shared uh, value. While wow. you are sharing something else, there's something that's, that can be tolerated as a diverse or a difference. So there's something that you can have your own opinion 
or your, your own perspective on how you dress, what car you drive, and what style of house you want to live in, or what kind of food you are eating that is not uh, shared. It can, it can be different. So that's, that's a coherency with the diversity. The thing is, where you draw the line between the, something that's common or even absolute and something that is uh, diverse and thus related. These two things are connected and related. It's not separated. Because it's not separated, uh, you have to have a certain uh, uh, standard or line. determining uh, something or deciding something or even making communication uh, if you're tr trying to come up with an agreement always uh, there isn't an issue of whether it's is it absolute or related if you are to have a good relationship among the people uh, within a family within a company or within a church you gotta know which are the absolute and do you agree with this absolute value and what's relative and diverse permitted to be diverse and first measurement or the 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 the, the analysis of a world view always has to do with knowing which is absolute and which is considered relative and uh, permissive to be diverse. The same with the uh, uh, Christian belief. When you become a Christian, there is a something called absolute truth, which cannot be changed or cannot be uh, different. We believe uh, as, as Christian, all we have three God in one, one in one God, but three person. Which is, which makes a difference between the Christian Christianity and uh, the Islam Muslim uh, Islam belief. So Islam belief, there is no three person. God is only one God, and they they cannot understand that there are three different person to be one. So that's uh, the major difference. So absolute truth in Christianity says uh, we believe in one God who are uh, who are three in person and these three person are the uh, in the same rank while the uh, Islam believe there's only one God Allah and there's no other gods and if you say there is a, a, a three gods in one that's blasphemy so that's the major difference that's why uh, Christianity and Islam cannot come together uh, in, in, in a doctrinal um, manner. So that's actually the truth for Christianity. Christianity believes that Jesus came in person and 100% as, as a human being, then also 100% as, as God, which is not possible to some 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 other religion, so th those are something called uh, after the truth. And also, uh, Jesus was resurrected as a total hundred uh, percent human and hundred percent God. So that that's kind of truth that we are talking about. And this truth is also related how you worship on. Um, when you come to church, and uh, what 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 the teaching should be and these things, so that's and 
how 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 you understand the the, the coherency and the diversity. Again, now uh, once you understand that uh, concept, society and individuals they may have something that's coherent, and as an individual, you're diverse. So society in general is considered something that would, should be coherent and congruent and uh, each individual, every person considered diverse. And some society have, have less of individual diversity or different. For example, Korea in uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s, 1970s, is more of coherent. Society demand certain conformity, meaning you, you have to uh, be like this. So when you go to school, you have to wear a certain uniform and a, 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 even a, you know, in a company, uh, you, workplace, you have to wear certain uniform because uniformity was a important uh, value in uh, past uh, Korea. But nowadays, uh, school permits, you know, some school uh, it, it still wears the uniform, but many schools uh, permit your own, own uh, clothes, uh, free uh, dressing clothes. So that's that's kind of uh, coherence and diversity. The thing is, this, these are closely connected, related, and because it's related, it should be integrated. If each segment of the uh, social elements or individual individual elements or coherency and diversity are not integrated, and we have problems. So, even if you may not agree in a, something that's absolute, absolute value, you should have your own system that is integrated, not separated and uh, divided and non-related. So that's the main thing. So when you uh, look at uh, someone, someone's worldview, or if you're trying to understand a person, the question that you are asking is, is this person a whole person? Okay. Whether it's a person, whether it's a society, whether it's a, a church, being whole, this, this word is very important in understanding the, the integration or the, the relation of each segment. So to be whole is not only is integrated and it is healthy. So a healthy integration is being whole. So the, if you are looking at, looking at a person or if you are looking at a family, the question is, is this family a, a whole family? Is this person a whole person? If you're not seeing a whole person, that person is not mature yet. This applies to a church too, a Christianity. And if you look at a church, is this a church, whole church? Meaning, is every component of church or the members of church are they integrated, I mean, in, in good relationship? And also, are, are they healthy? Healthy it can be applied to uh, many uh, things. Uh, healthy, well, the, the body, a healthy mental, healthy doctrine, and healthy rituals. But these healthy, being healthy is very important uh, in being a whole. So, when you when you see a person, uh, we are analyzing a person by their 
a word to you. And as you see their word to you, at first it's all segmented and it doesn't make sense uh, to one another. It's, it's not in two grade. Uh, hom homogeneous unit means once you are integrated, it's connected, and you you are seeing uh, the whole thing healthy. It's like a, a, a forest. Forest has many trees, but these many trees are integrated. There are small plants, there are tall trees, there are uh, uh, white uh, leaves, uh, I mean leaves, uh, trees, and there are nail uh, like a uh, needle, needle uh, leaves a tree. All different kind of trees are integrated and be, by being integrated it creates a, a healthy uh, ecology which is called a forest and when that happens it becomes a homogeneous unit and those when it's homo homogeneous it's organized Organized is not applied to, usually applied to the organic matter, but non-organic, when it is homogeneous, when it is integrated, when it is coherent, we call it organized. Uh, a company or church is organized, meaning it's in having a certain Certain order, not chaos. So, a healthy, a coherent, and integrated worldview, it has order. And because having, because it has order, we can call it organized. So that's very important characters. Uh, of coherent uh, worldview. Now, we continue with the topic of the frame of reference. This frame of reference, uh, it is something that structures a worldview and uh, because of the frame of reference, we can uh, see that worldview is related and connected. Definition. What's a frame of reference? Even though you may realize it or understand it yet, <coughs> but every person and every culture, every uh, society, they do have a frame of reference or references, and which is uh, closely uh, connected uh, the, to the paradigm that we discussed uh, in the last lesson. So paradigm worldview is has to do with this frame of reference. It, it is like your bone in your body. Even though you have flesh over the bones, Without the, these bones under the flesh, you are not going to be able to stand or walk or do anything in the, ma in the matter. So frame of reference is like uh, uh, the bone. Uh, it's very close to the paradigm, but there's little difference. Frame provides related category. So the frame means it does uh, provide a, a category while the reference provides relative measurements so it categorizes and it provides a measurement uh, and you understand what it means so the frame is something that divides and categorizes into certain order while the references provide the measurement, the quali quality and the quantity. So references, again, a quantifier and a qualifier. Uh, 
qualifier and quantifier. Qualifier uh, is a measurement of quality and quantifier is a measurement of uh, quantity and the quality. So each quantity and quality, uh, quantity and uh, quality is measured, meaning that something is more, something is less. So that's what it does, the reference does. So let's continue. The function of this frame of reference, uh, frame of reference does these things. First, it identifies. So a good example of frame of reference is the, the names. So by naming things, naming a person, uh, you have frame of reference. For example, uh, human being. But what kind of human being? And the frame of reference says there's a male and female, woman and man. So these names, man and woman, uh, the male and female, it is a good example of frame of reference. Not only it it, it categorizes, it does qualify, sometimes quantify. So first thing, the, the word view or the, or the frame of reference does is it identifies. And by identifying the, uh, the, and the classifying the things, it gives a, a relative position, a relative value, relative position one to the other. So that, that kind of creates the, the frame of reference and the relationship. So father and the son is a good example of a frame of reference. By naming father as father and son as son, uh, you do understand the relationship. So word of view creates that relationship and by identifying each every individual subject or object. Again, say man and woman, it does not only identify, it distinguishes which is and which is not. And this, when this is, this is not. When this is, this, that is not. So that separates and distinguish. And it differentiates. When you distinguish and when you separate, it can be the same thing. For example, I have two hands. I can call it a uh, 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 pens or markers. Okay. So when I say markers, it separates from my cell phone. So markers and sep uh, cell phone separate. But within these markers, one is red marker, the other is purple marker. So purple marker is different and different from the red marker. So that, that's uh, again the frame of reference. So the language, before the language there is an idea, but before the idea there is a perception. Your eye, I say this color is different from this color. So that perception turns your idea and that idea uh, turns into the language. So these is these are the function of the word view. The naming is a very uh, you know a critical uh, elements of understanding word view. Again the naming what is the naming is the language. When you understand the language, 
when you analyze the language and you come to the bottom of it to the, the, the frame of reference and by uh, studying a language uh, and the culture for example then you can come to the frame of reference so it quantifies meaning large small that's an example of quantifying and then it qualifies good or bad good quality and bad quality those are the qualifiers and it does qualify so good and bad bad is a good example of frame of reference so people and the culture whether you acknowledge or not, and when you study it, when you analyze it, they do have these frame of reference. And one good way to understand a person or a religion, for example, is to see what's behind it, what's uh, under it. So the paradigms, the hidden uh, frame of reference is key to understanding uh, worldview. By analyzing a worldview, you can compare your worldview to others, and their worldview to yours. So that, and thus, the, again, and this frame of reference qualifies, or paradigm does qualify. And it helps to communicate. Without frame of reference, you are not be, going to be able to uh, uh, communicate effectively and it is very easy to say man and woman and girl and boy then try to you know uh, explain with it with your hands or, or drawings every time so the words and the language is a good frame of reference which helps to communicate not only this frame of reference helps someone to communicate but it helps uh, you to document the language and the writings the letters see a b c d these these letters alphabets they help you I mean, the alphabets are the good, again, a good example of frame of reference. Now, by arranging these alphabets, we come up with a certain word. And these words help us to document the thing. So doc, the frame of reference helps us to document. So without this frame of reference, well, one cannot actually uh, live in a society. So example of paradigm. So paradigm and the frame of reference is used interchangeably, which means it's basically the same, same concept. So paradigm and the frame of reference are the uh, basic form, form the structure of a worldview. By understanding the paradigm or the frame of reference that's underlying behind the culture, uh, context, or religion, uh, you 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 can understand or analyze or compare compare one culture to the other, one person to the other. So it's very important tool and useful useful tool uh, to, to live I mean uh, it's, it's not so academic thing or scholars scholastic thing and what you view is daily and everyday thing so this this lesson is going to help you a lot Let's, let's continue with the examples of uh, this word view, I mean the paradigms and the frame of reference.
some some of the the the, the paradigms or the frame of reference is given. It's given to you. As you are born into the world, as a baby, many things are given to you. Your family is given. And you don't have a choice. Uh, your mom and dad, they were given to you. And your brother and sister, you, you, have, you have no uh, saying in what kind of brother or sister you are going to have. So these are the given. It's very passive. Uh, you don't have your choice, your sayings. And uh, there are many things that the paradigms or the frame of reference or the world view in that matter is given to you. And uh, some, some, some of the domains or the areas uh, of this world view, for example, gender. Your gender is given. Uh, you, you don't have your choice. The language, uh, if you're born as a Korean, you're going to speak Korean. If you're born as an American, you're going to learn to speak and uh, 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 speak the, the, the English, right? So that, those are the things. Yeah. Your race, you don't choose to choose to born uh, as a nation, uh, as given. Uh, also, the territory that you're born into, that's given. So the, these frame of reference, paradigms, as, as you, these are basic, the fundamental uh, frame of reference, or the, the paradigm, or the, the fundamental of what you do, these things are given. And nature, I mean, you can born into a, a, a uh, Mediterranean uh, weather and the climate and the nature, and you're you're, you're born into a, a jungle in, in Africa or a jungle in Amazon. So these the nature around you are given, but now you can change the territory, your nature. The universe that we the universe that we see is given to us, and the Christian belief is given by God, the Creator, and the scientists believe it has evolved. Uh, by itself. And they only, actually scientists are only able to uh, explain the mechanism of how the universe was born and, uh, and so-called Big Bang Theory. That's the one example of uh, scientists trying to explain how the world came. But uh, why the world came and, and who, who made it, you know, how it began, you know, it's, it's, beyond uh, science. So that's where the religion comes in, uh, actually. And that's, uh, I mean, the worldview. I mean, uh, the science explains certain part of worldview, while the religion tries to uh, explain the, the other part of worldview. And the color, uh, color that we see, and these things are different. While these things are given, some paradigms uh, are given to you, again, some of the frame of reference or paradigm are culture. Culture means it's been made or developed or, or, or processed, sometimes processed, by us human being. For example, letters, language. Language is actually given. It's given by God. 
but the letters uh, the American use alphabet and uh, many European cultures use alphabet Chinese use Chinese characters Korean use Hangul so these letters are invented by men as, as a result of our efforts and these things are so called culture and the numbers and the religion culture these things are the things that has been developed developed or invented or created uh, by human beings Again, some other examples. Houses, dresses, tools. Because the culture, uh, it reflects the, the, the world view. So paradigm is underlying or behind these things that are culture. For example, houses. Uh, if you are living in a rural area in somewhere in Asia, most likely your houses use rice straw. The, the, you know, rice straw. And uh, also use those clay, clay, the dirt to build houses. Because it's something that you can put your hand on. That's how the culture is made. And if you're living in America, most houses are built with the lumber, the wood, because wood is readily available and it's solid and strong. And it is to cut and uh, make into certain sizes. So it reflects, houses are different and it reflects the culture. Dresses, way you dress uh, is different and not only is it different it does have certain meaning and especially in us grow up in Asian culture we know our traditional uh, dress and uh, we don't wear that anymore but uh, because of the reason of uh, you know uh, the comfort and uh, convenience uh, but you know, when, when you study your, your the, uh, costume or the traditional dress, the traditional dress does have meaning. For example, <coughs> Korea used to wear the white, uh, uh, white color dress, which reflects the, the, the message of peace. So that's, and then uh, there's something called colored uh, the dress in Korea and it's uh, probably it's the same in China which is uh, believed to distant the evil spirit so th those are the uh, like a uh, frame of reference or paradigm behind the dresses tools uh, tools is under the age. Okay, now the paradigm on the tangible. Tangible means physically you can touch and uh, put your hands on. So those are the tangible. Uh, direction, N-E-W-S, north, east, west, and south. So the direction is a frame of reference, good frame of reference. And the, I mean, without this direction, you cannot travel and you cannot do mm, probably anything. We use navigation uh, these days, um, your smartphone. And even though it's a navigation, it's only a technology applied. The navigation is 
has to do with the map. In the ancient days, when Columbus uh, left uh, the port of, uh, in, in Spain, he had a map. But he didn't have a map of America. He only had a compass, which says north, east, west, and south. So that's frame of reference in there. Size, large and small. And you measure the size with the centimeters or inches or foot yards. So these measurements are a good example of frame of reference. And it is an example paradigm. Color, you say bright and dark. That's a frame of reference. And when we say dark, probably most culture understand what the darkness is and what the brightness is. When you said red, and no, that's red is different from green. So that's frame of reference. Weight, heavy or light. And we use kilograms or pound to measure the weight. And then, long and short. So mile, kilometers, this, these are the measurements of the land. So these are the examples of uh, frame of reference on the, something that's tangible, something that you can put your hands on. Something that is visible, something that is physical. Height, width, broad or narrow, tall or short, depth, deep or shallow, then shape, triangle, rectangular, circle, oval, and these, these are all frame of reference. So, when you know and understand a multiple frame of reference, that means you are able, you are capable. So the language, if you know more words, more vocabularies, that means you have more uh, ability to express yourself in a more diverse and abundant way. Another way, uh, another word, you have more frame of reference to, to explain and express and describe uh, the situation or object or concepts even, which helps you to become more of whole person. Uh, in this time, whole person means a better person. Better than the other? No. Actually, better than the yourself uh, yesterday. So each day, you can become a more of whole person, better person, by expanding the, the frame of reference. So that's quite important to have more frame of reference and learning under the language is the way to expand, broaden, or mature your frame of reference. See? So that's why the learning under the language is important. It makes you a better person. And again, another example of frame of reference. Something that is abstract. We, we've discussed something that is uh, <coughs> solid and physical. Abstract, that's not physical. It's more of concept. It's in there. You cannot see it, but you can feel it. And you 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 don't you you cannot put your hands on it, but you can understand it. So for example, beautiful and urbanly. These are good frame of uh, reference, but 
It is good, but it is, it is not that objective as height or weight. So when you say it's beautiful, each person feels different. Uh, even though there is something that's common and coherent. Majority of people say the flower is beautiful. But there are some people who say the flower is ugly. Uh, they, they, they are not sharing this common uh, value. Oh, but you cannot say because someone say the flower is not beautiful, you cannot say this person is wrong or uh, ethically wrong or unethical. Uh, but you usually, uh, usually people say the uh, flower is beautiful. But when it comes to something else other than a flower, when you say a person is beautiful, sometimes that's, that's uh, very confusing. Uh, let's say that. Very confusing. Uh, someone is beautiful to this person, well, some, some say that person is ugly. So that's, that's really, really uh, and falls into this area, diverse area. So it's not objective, it is very subjective. So on abstract, something that's in your head, not visible. It's hard to make objective frame of reference or objective paradigm. Each feels different. And smart and dumb. Looks like you have a pretty much good idea about what this being smart is. But in, in, in reality, uh, where, where do you draw a line between being smart and dumb? Is that IQ? I can say it's so much, but it doesn't say everything. You can have a low IQ, but you can still be smart. So, that IQ is an objective measurement. It's not yet, it's not absolute. So these are the things of frame of reference uh, paradigm that is an abstract. Again, let's go to the examples of a frame of reference on people. So when you see the see people in this very materialistic and a, a capitalistic world that we are living in, rich and poor is a very common uh, measurement or paradigm or frame of reference on people. Even even in you know China. Many of you came from China. Uh, the, nowadays, rich and poor is a very uh, priority frame of reference in determining or classifying people. So, rich and poor. It's very ancient and it is still a very valid uh, frame of reference on people. High and low, low. I mean, human being in, in generation and generation in history try to deal with this uh, very issue. But the things that we are uh, facing today, the, we had a uh, very unstable uh, day and night uh, for the past few days, past weekend, uh, due to uh, this George Floyd uh, issue. So as you see the issue, it is high and low. Some people, uh, for example, white uh, supremacists, they say that white are better than uh, black. 
nowhere in the Bible says that. And some even in the in the past history, they try to justify white supremacy with the Bible, saying, you know, uh, there were three different races after the flood, and uh, uh, there are three sons who uh, dealt with the issue of being a Noah naked, and then there are three different uh, reactions, and because due to that reactions, the one who mocked uh, the nakedness of Noah became the black uh, race. I mean, nowhere in the Bible says that, but somehow that become a, a, a doctrine, or actually a dogma, and they teach this in Sunday schools in the in the white church, and that they believe that as biblical truth. And because of these kind of things, you know, people have very misunderstanding, and that it develops into racism. And when that racism is connected to your belief or your faith, and it's, it's very dangerous. So that happened in the, in the history. And that has to do with uh, being low and high. So who's low and who's high? Some, some culture says the male are higher than the female. Men are better than women. Some culture says that those who are, have uh, more the age are better than the younger one. That's the Korean culture. Basically, it's saying that if you're even one year older, you better use the a language that honors uh, that uh, person. So that's high and low in every culture, and that's a paradigm and a, a frame of reference. But the Bible says, Christianity says, there is no one who is better than the other in uh, in terms of. Um, uh, the, the, being a human, the value. Every person has the same value. Uh, Black life is just important as white life. Uh, and there's no difference. So that's what the Bible teaches. But people can interpret the Bible in a different way and use the, those uh, Bible teachings to gain and their, their advantage. And when that happens, it is wrong. It's not biblical. And it's actually blessed them because you are going against the words of God. And we, we try to deal with the, this high and low issue. And democracy is there to say every human being are equal in their rights and that they, they, they have their own God-given freedom. And uh, that's biblical. Because democracy, American democracy, came from uh, Christian uh, faith. Again, blonde and ignorant. For example, in Korea, you know, we know that, I mean, we highly respect those with the uh, more education. That's why people try to go to the college and then uh, the, the graduate schools and everything and try to earn the PhD. That motivates uh, people to study and study. And that, that actually helped the, the whole society to become uh, a better society in some sense. But if you try to uh, put down the less learned uh, to the more learned and it becomes an issue. But people use that paradigm as a measurement or, or the, uh, the classification classified to classify the people. Civilized and barbarian. Uh, 
For example, in England, uh, the English uh, Christianity said uh, those people in Af Africa and South America, mm, they are perverian. And uh, in, in biblical sense, perverian is people without God. But when the English used that, that word in the colonial uh, England, uh, it means they're less than us. So, civilization, civilization does not mean that you are a better people. Because you have technology, it doesn't mean that you are better than those without technology. Those who are in a primitive, that word even, primitive, is very prejudiced, prejudiced word. So those who are in a natural state and, and living their style of life and having their uh, own uh, culture, that's not barbarian. Uh, that's not uncivilized. That's civilized in, in, in their sense. So that's, that's how Bible sees this different uh, uh, civilization or uh, the, uh, the, the benefit of science and technology. Benefit of science and technology, it helps you, but it doesn't mean that you're a better person than those who are living in a, a jungle. So that's how Christianity views these things. Now this, us and others, that's very problematic uh, paradigm or frame of reference. So who are us? Who are we? Uh, and this, whether it's a Eastern culture or a Western culture, this, this is the same issue. How you draw a line, uh, we or us means that's one of us, same and they're shared, and, uh, and on my side, while the others uh, usually it means uh, potential enemy. So these, these are very problem, problematic. And again, we, we're going back to this, uh, the racial issue that America is facing today. There are two different us. Some, some say, some white, says only white people are us and the black are the others and they, they put the black on the lower scale of society while they put their themselves on the top of the society so that division we and others us and others division can cause conflict in, in Christianity, the Christians are us, and then non-believers are others. So, the, that does that mean a Christian are better than those uh, non-believing uh, people? No. But many, many Christians confuse this, because if we are Christians, they think they are better than those are not having or knowing Jesus Christ, which is very, very far from the truth. The truth is, we are only the first person or uh, the uh, person who early, who know, come to know God and Christ earlier than the others. Because you got to know them, uh, the, the God earlier, that doesn't mean that you're a better person. But some confuse this. And because they are Christian, they, they think they're above and beyond other people, non-believers. Which is a bad paradigm and a strong frame of work for Christians. And the problem is many pastors 
and the, and then uh, theologians and the church teach that as the, the, the solid doctrine. So many issues that we are facing as a Christianity, as a church today, comes out of this. Uh, we Christians and them and non-Christians. No, that's not the way it is. The Christians dare to serve those who are not yet come to know Jesus. So that's the correct statement. Not yet to come to know Jesus. So what is our duty? It is us who knew uh, earlier than them to go there and let them know. Help them to know who God is, who Jesus Christ is. And there is no distinction of better and less or high and low and that's that's the message in christian uh, worldview okay the frame of reference paradigm does identify and classify i told you about the names already and the codes these codes the classifiers and the numbers. These are the uh, example of identifiers and classifiers. I have discussed this. Uh, scientific measurement, longitude, latitude, degrees, kilograms, pounds, meter, yard, and ounce. Uh, that's once, not once, ounce. Mm, wrong spelling. Okay. These are the measurements, and this, we, because we have these measurements, we can make a good frame of reference and make a communications and understand the reality with the common, coherent, and congruent uh, conceptualization. So these, these frame of reference, scientific measurements, helps us to be uh, more civilized but that does not mean that we are we are better than others positioning up and down low and high and uh, gender class age these are the things examples of positioning paradigm and uh, sometimes this positioning, if you put the uh, value to the positioning, for example, uh, I wrote the Seoul. Uh, in Korean, we say uh, we are going up to Seoul. And uh, when you live in a province, uh, uh, local, other local areas, you're going up to Seoul. It means Seoul is a better place than other uh, locations, other cities. So that's kind of putting value to the uh, position and which may create a problem. Okay, uh, I think that time's up and uh, we'll try to stop here and uh, thank you for you know for attending this class and listening to the lectures and uh, I hope and pray that you are good uh, you will uh, make a good use of these knowledges and even if you are not a Christian it's important to understand the concept of worldview and make a use of that worldview concept and uh, uh, the, as, a, as a tool uh, in your life and if you're a Christian then know that Christian worldview is very different, different from uh, the secular or general uh, worldview of your culture, uh, what you have learned. And it is important to change that word of view to the biblical one or Christian one. And uh, it is a lifetime process that you're going to face as a Christian. And even, even though you're not a Christian, it is a lifetime process. You are trying to reach this coherent and the whole uh, holistic worldview of your own. And it's lifetime process again, and uh, 
uh, it's, it's it, I mean, this academic effort and uh, uh, the learning is all has to do with the, uh, creating a holistic and uh, mm, better world view. And thank you for uh, listening and see you next time. Bye.